and my pride is getting knocked. Do you hate dyslexics? House of Believes is about a... What is it about? <laughs> Terrifying. I've been reading House of Leaves, so uh, this is probably just going to be the House of Re Leaves reading vlog because this is a 700 page book which I don't normally read in a week. I am uh, 86 pages in, oh my goodness, I'm 86 pages in to this part of the story but I've also read a lot in the appendix already. Um, and it has, this story has so many things that I really really love just right off the bat like so many very very specific tropes to me that I love and people have told me for so long based off of these very specific things that you like you need to read House of Leaves and I've just I tried once and it was just too hard uh, because I'm dyslexic and this book is not formatted for dyslexics. I already struggle uh, with certain formatting things and this book is a format. Like it's just, it's chaos in it. Um, so anyway, I'm trying really, really hard again this time. And it is hard, but it's also a great story and there's so many things that it's doing that I love. So the story begins with um, this hallway that just kind of appears and it doesn't make sense and it shouldn't be there, but it's just this small little cubby thing that connects these two rooms and it doesn't, like when you measure the house, it doesn't make sense. And the dimensions are just ever so slightly off about this house. Like there's a quarter of an inch too much on the inside side and um, then the hallway gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and then we finally have um, the the part of the story where they explore the hallway and once you get into it it's like a friggin TARDIS like it bigger on the inside it doorways appear and I don't want to say too much because the five and a half minute hallway uh, section was phenomenal so I really want you to be able to experience it if you haven't yet but um, it has all these tropes that I love. Like, for instance, um, when I read The Haunting of Hill House, I love that element of horror of like, it's not quite right. Something very normal, something very, something that's not a big deal um, is just slightly wrong and that's really unnerving. So like for them, it was that the dimensions were wrong in the house, that the doors would just slam shut and they kept trying to logically explain it. Like the doors are hung wrong or it was a gust or whatever, but like the house seems wrong. And then stuff like Piranesi where the house is ever changing, ever evolving. And you know, you go into a room and you, you make markings on it, but then it shifts and it changes and, and the house is alive. And um, books like the, uh, the, um, the bone shard daughter where like it's a million different ro rooms with a million different keys and you have to have the right key to the right room which is not what house of leaves is but it is a lot of different rooms that are shifting and changing and that you could easily get lost i don't want to say too much um anyway there's so many extremely specific tropes that i love that are just like very very specific just you don't see them very much and house of leaves does them all <laughs> and it also does this amazing thing where because of the formatting of the book where it's it's researching this anomaly that was documented through um through like these these snippets of video recording and then it's somebody's footnotes uh giving their interpretation and assessment and giving their little add-ins about it but then it's also someone else's footnotes on top of that and this one character who keeps going on these side tangents and the way it's written with it being people researching a situation instead of us being in the situation with the characters it should make me feel very removed from the story and from the horror but it doesn't because of the way he's because it's like no now we're in it because now we're actually watching the videotape of them going down the hallway right so somehow I'm still very emotionally invested and like this crazy stuff like this guy who writes the footnotes who is a terribly unlikably guy unlikable guy this guy who goes on all these side tangents about his obsessions and about his addictions and about him like just him as a person I'm like I don't care about you as a person I care about this anomaly within this house 
and then all of a sudden like you then you have a footnote of someone else saying if you want to know more about this guy that you don't even like go check out the appendix and read about 80 pages worth of letters from his mom to him and I don't even know his mom why would I care about reading letters written by someone who hasn't even been introduced to the story to someone who I don't even like in the story but I read those letters and I forget about the main plot because I'm so engrossed in these letters and what's happening there and it's like it's just wild. It's just really well written where it's this chaotic formatting and this very removed, what should be removed formatting, but I'm so invested. Um, I am still struggling, like I am still having a lot of issues uh, because of the formatting, which I haven't even gotten to the main part of the book where the formatting goes crazy, but especially in those letters, I really, really struggled because like there's parts where the letters, the words are written on top of each other or the words are getting jumbled or she's not making perfect sense or she's leaving codes she's leaving like secret messages within her letters and that kind of stuff just I can't do it like I, I can't do it um, I spent about I spent almost an hour on one on just one letter trying to decode something and I kept getting things jumbled and like I couldn't the form I couldn't make it I couldn't do it and I kept restarting and trying again trying to figure out this code and I eventually went to my discord and I was like this is what I've gotten so far and what I had gotten wasn't even right because it was just it's a very frustrating feeling when your favorite thing in the world reading you're physically unable to do because of because of a reading disability you know what I mean like it's very it's very disheartening um, but I think the way I'm approaching the story now is just accepting like you have a reading disability there's nothing you can do about it so when you get to those formatting quirks just go to your discord and ask for help because there are people in my discord that are soup that are super in love with this book that are really excited to help me um, so I'm just I'm just accepting taking the L and I'm accepting that this is the way I have to read this book um, so I may not get the whole book done this week I really hope that I can because eventually the book's formatting changes to where it's like there's not that much text on a page um, and like it's just you know you have to turn it this way and there are times where things are you have to read from different directions um, or things are written on top of each other things are written backwards and you have to read it through a mirror and like I don't know if I can read this whole thing in a week because it is I am reading extremely slowly because the formatting just like things are just getting really jumbled in my head and I don't you know I'm gonna take my time I want to enjoy it because I am really enjoying it so far anyway all that to say I am really enjoying this uh, it is an extreme challenge and my pride is getting knocked <laughs> but um, that's okay. I'm going to read the daggum thing because I'm enjoying it and I will just get help. But I'll check in with you when I've read more. Um, hopefully it'll go a little bit faster once we get to the pages that have less text on them. But it will also go slower on the pages where the text formatting is wrong. So who knows what's going to happen. done actually over half done with house of leaves that's what we're still talking about I'm right here which looks like the halfway point but it's not because these spots here that I have tabbied that I have um dog-eared that's what that's called these are just the appendixes because you have to flip to the appendix you have to flip back and forth a lot Ooh. Um, so it's just helping me easily get there so the book actually ends technically right there so I only have that much left which is a lot. Anyway, I showed you a couple of weird pages. How about look at this one? 
why everything is, I mean, I know why, but why is everything written in different directions? And then how about this one? Do you hate dyslexics? I actually have awesome patrons and anytime I need help, I either just like with the, with the whole section that was struck out, one of my patrons just went on uh, online and grabbed the text and reformatted it so that they weren't struck out anymore so that I could read it. And then if there's a single line or something um, that's like written backwards or something like that, I can just like take a picture of it and post it in my Discord and people help me. So I'm, I'm, it's working. <laughs> I'm, I'm making it through this book this time. There's a lot of pages that are written. Um, let's see, I wanna make sure I'm not gonna spoil you because you're more likely to read the page if there's just a couple of words on it. There's pages like this where there's one word, one word there, but it's really effective storytelling because the next page will have like two or three words or something and it's this very dramatic reveal as you're turning the pages very, very rapidly, a reveal of something that's like really, really intense. Um, and it's really effective. The way he plays with the formatting, the way he's turning, you know, this house or this hallway rather has turned into a labyrinth with all the different doors and how it's shifting and moving. And even if you try to mark your way, the markings are be are getting disturbed and like, you know, terrifying. So as the hallway is turning more and more into a labyrinth. The book too is turning more and more into a labyrinth, which is why it's being written in different directions and why you're having to physically turn the book around to read certain parts and stuff because we are going through it with it. And it's like, I don't know, it's a really interesting way of playing with the formatting so that as I'm experiencing, you know, turning the corner or um, you know, the, all, all the doors slamming shut at the same time or whatever's happening, I'm experiencing it in the formatting as well, which is just, it, it's, a, it's very effective. It's a very effective storytelling style that's really, really immersive, which makes those really dramatic scenes uh, land in a, in a unique way, which is really, really cool. Also, something that I'm really appreciating is as he's digging into the psychology of these people he's also referencing fake articles and fake you know this is um they're they're reflecting on videotapes and it's multiple people trying to piece together what happened and trying delivering commentary on what happened and and so on um and as they're doing that uh he's referencing fake articles and he's referencing fake uh, interviews and stuff, but he's also referencing real life th things. Um, like for instance, stuff like someone being stuck alone for a certain amount of time and how that, how that can like affect your mind or, um, being stuck in a terrifying situation for too long or not being able to find the way out and how that can, how that can truly make someone spiral. Um, and as he's doing that, he's referencing real life scenarios, which I think is really interesting because um, my dad's a big rock climber or used to be a really big rock climber and I grew up climbing. And growing up, my dad and I would watch any kind of documentary or interview, anything we could get our hands on about professional rock climbers, ice climbers, um, cavers, really just anything in that kind of genre of interest. We were just, we watched a lot of those things. So I've seen a lot of stories of people who have gotten lost, stranded, et cetera, and, and what they went through. And it's really interesting to see him referencing those types of things because that's something that I actually, I have a lot of interest in and it does add a lot to the psychosis of the characters for him to tie it in, anchor it into real life scenarios of people who have gone through something very different, but their, their mental state w went through a similar arc to what some of these characters are going through. It's just very, it's, it's, it's a really unique book. It's a very challenging book, but it's also so engrossing. But I am really enjoying reading this. It's a very, very, very unique experience.
know the lighting in here is bad and I apologize for that, but here we are to talk about the House of Leaves. As I was reading, as I was um, watching back the vlog, I realized that I haven't really told you what this book is. I've told you a little bit about what the main story is, but I haven't really told you what this book is. So allow me to do so. House of Leaves, um, the, so we start off with, well, House of Leaves is about a, what is it about? Johnny, Johnny, his pal's neighbor dies, an old man, he's dead now. So Johnny and this pal, Lude, I think was his name, go into this, go, go to see the deadness and they find him and they find a, a massive pile of, um, of papers and it turns out that Sam, who died, was working on this epic project and it's this fixation, obsession, trying about this found footage um, on a house that had a hallway that was too big. The house on the inside, the dimensions were bigger on the inside than the outside, and then there was this hallway. And I've talked about that already. You don't need to hear me talk about it again. So Johnny, he takes all of this literature, all these, all this research of this man, and he starts trying to compile it together and make sense of it, add his own notes and try to understand it. And he very quickly, this is not a spoiler, very quickly realizes that this found, there's no record of this. There's no, this footage wasn't real. So as he's trying to understand this, he's also coming across information within the text, footnotes. So the the main story is the found footage. It's the, the guy, Zam Zampano? I don't know how to say his name. It's his, um, it's him detailing the footage as well as his own understanding and research and side tangents of his own. And then it's Johnny and his footnotes offering up more information about some of the things, like um, so, some important information to understand context, as well as Johnny's just telling his own story. He's talking about his own life. He's a tattoo artist. And also he, um, he's horrible. Oh, he's so terribly unlikable. He has a lot of addictions and obsessions. He's very sexist and gross. He just, he's very gross. He's a gross person. The way he speaks about his conquests and the way he thinks, but the more you get to know him, he is such a distinct voice. My goodness. He, I know this guy. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, and then you also have an ed editorial notes who's adding more information on top of Johnny's information. So there's layers to this story, but the more you read the story, and that's really, I've already, that's plenty. The more you read the story, the more, <laughs> what did you read? The more you read the story, the more it, the things that are absolutely true, that are factually true about this book, about, about the material within the book and the people within the book and the things that the people are telling you, the more you learn, the more you question it all and it's like, okay, this thing that I know, you get more information and it's like, hold on. <laughs> that recontextualizes everything. So then as things are, uh, as things are unraveling and as things are like starting to, you're starting to make connections or deconstruct con connections that you've already made, then it's like, okay, well, what else have I missed? <laughs> like what, what are some of the other things that I should have seen, but they were hidden from me. And because of all the weird formatting stuff, it, it's like a trip. It's like a trip reading this book. Also, no spoilers. But at the end of the book, I'm left, like, like, I feel like the book is trying to invoke a spiral <laughs> of its own. Like the book, the story itself is this chaotic piece of literature where like reading, the experience of reading the book, the experience of, of going through these pages is an experience in and of itself, but then once it leaves you at the end, you kind of just felt left at the end to where it's like, what, <laughs> what, what, where, where, what, 
Um, it's quite it's quite the experience to read this book is what I'm gonna say and there's a lot of connections too that that are like that there are a lot of connections that are that are things that we're familiar with like I talked about articles and real-life situations with climbers and cabers and but there's also references to like the Bible and to mythology and to like real-life people but then there's also made-up references and then you even have to start the line is kind of fuzzy about what's real and what's not. It's a wild trip. It's a trip to read this book. And at the end here, I feel like I'm left wondering a lot. I'm left wondering a lot of the, what was the battery died and that's probably for the best. I'm now on my phone. Sorry that this is, this is now found footage. The re the reading this book was an experience and a half and um, I'll be reading it again. Not now. <laughs> Give me some time. But reading this book was, um, it was a very unique experience. I've already started googling other books that play with formatting like this one did because it was such a unique experience. So, um, that, I read that. It was definitely a challenge to read. It took up a lot of my time and my headspace. Probably I would actually recommend because it's such a challenge and because it's such a trip to read this book. I would recommend if anybody decides to pick it up because of me, maybe just go a chapter at a time, read it nice and slow, really marinate on it. I have an obsessive personality, so I can't do that. Um, but maybe you should. But that was, that's the only book that I read this week. Um, it was quite large, uh, but it was, it was great. It was amazing. Definitely as the book, if anybody picks it up because of me, as the book instructs you to go flip to the back, read the appendic appendixes, what, however you would say that, do it. Uh, it adds a lot to the story. It adds a lot. It, it adds a lot to the experience. So, um, yeah, it was wild. Anyway, that was the only book I read this week, but I did also finish the third arc for Vinland Saga. So keeping this spoiler free, keeping this really brief because it's the third arc. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was, it's still my least favorite of the three. The first two arcs of Vinland Saga are just so, I hope I'm not covering the mic. The first two arcs of Vinland Saga are just like, they're S tier. They're, they're so phenomenal. Um, I really have connected with this story on a level that I absolutely did not expect. And I have loved reading it. Um, and I really enjoyed the third arc as well, but like the bar is so high. You can't expect a series to just stay there. The whole, like there's going to be dips. And this was for me, it was a dip, but not a significant enough one to really, I don't really have a lot to fuss over. So anyway, there will be a dedicated arc review for this as well as Philip and I will continue to do our book by book dis discussions on this channel, the second channel. Um, so we'll have a lot to discuss in full spoilers, but that is my spoiler free. No, let me say this because this is more, this is less vague. The characters that were added in this arc, phenomenal, loved. Um, I loved almost all of the added characters and even the ones that I wouldn't put under love, it was still an enjoyment. So like love the character work, love the theme progression, love Thorfinn. The plotting was really my my one like gripe. So, um, you know, whatever, it is what it is. I still really enjoyed myself. So it's this is not a negative review. That's what I read this week. And I would love to continue talking with you about it in the comments if you'd like to. And I'm going to try to sleep.